So let's move on. Uh, Politico broke the news this week that the House Foreign Affairs Chair Michael McCall has selected Republican Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado to lead war powers talks in the lower chamber in an effort to repeal and replace several authorizations that remain on the books. As Politico reports, Buck confirmed he's handling the strategy for as many as four authorizations for the use of military force. And Congressman Buck joins us now. He, of course, serves on the House Judiciary and House Foreign Affairs Committees. You know, Congressman, every time this comes up, you know, there's some issues that come up, and you know where Democrats are going to be, you know where Republicans are going to be. I've got to say, in my time on the Armed Services Committee, when this issue would come up about authorization for, for war powers, everything got scrambled. You didn't know, you know, sometimes you'd have some really left-wing Democrats, really right-wing Republicans agreeing together for, for, for different reasons. But in this case, does it, it does really just make common sense, doesn't it, for everybody, that we can't keep going back to these old authorizations for war um, and that we got to sort through it. So how are you doing that? Well, thanks, Joe. I think this is really a, a constitutional issue. It is the job of, of Congress to declare war and, and to make sure we authorize the use of military force. Um, I, I have reached out to the various parts of the Republican Party. Um, uh, there are uh, Democrats who are working on it uh, with us, and we will move forward. I really think this is an issue where we could get 300, 350 votes. Now, there will be some uh, some parts of this that are going to be tricky, and, and, and basically that, that involves the reauthorization, um, making sure that we are giving President Biden the ability to move forward with uh, the, the military force. But, but it's in a specific way, and it should have a sunset on it so that it isn't a blank check uh, that, that we are giving uh, future presidents. Again, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Like 20 years, you have a war authorization for the Iraq war that, that, that's still around uh, so many years later. At some point, it, this is really an Article One question. Do we believe in the Constitution that the power to declare war uh, rests with Congress or not? And it seems to me this is, like you said, at the end of the day, it's a constitutional question. It is, and that's really where the rub has been in the past. The executive branch wants to maintain as much of this power as possible. Uh, the congressional branch wants to uh, make sure we're doing our job. But the really important thing to me, Joe, is when, the Cong when Congress says, we are giving you the authority to engage in this military action, it, it, it binds Congress, at, at least on a moral level, to make sure that we fund appropriately and make sure that our uh, uh, armed services, uh, the members in the armed services, are protected at, at the very best that we can. We're giving them the equipment, we're giving them the training, we're giving them a, a very very specific message or uh, mission. So I know when I work for right. president. And you, you know, Jen, no. uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, Jen, really quickly. It also, this lines up with, uh, you know, the Powell Doctrine, where, where when you have Americans that are sent off to war, we know why they're being sent off to war. It's very specific. We understand what goals need to be achieved before they come back home. And also, as Colin Powell said, again, from what he learned in Vietnam, you have to have the support of the American people before you go off to war. And, and so that's what's so, again, Jen Palmieri, that's what's so important about this is Congress, obviously, closest to the people, Congress should be the ones authorizing the wars. And I think that the, most of the American people have no idea that we're still operating under authorization of military, use of military force from 20 years ago. And I know when I worked for President Obama, this was an issue when if we had to take military action, we had to go back into Iraq um, at, at, at one point and still, and it was a lot of Democrats that gave the president uh, that were concerned about the president's use. It was like Tim Kaine, um, uh, Chris Murphy, you know, Democratic senators that were concerned about Congress not stepping up to take to authorize this itself. Why do you think it's taken 20 years to get to this point? I mean, why has is is this is this a shared problem between Congress and presidents not presidents not wanting to ask Congress not wanting to own the responsibility? 
why is it, why are we in this situation where 20 years later we're still operating under these old AMU, AUMFs? Well, I, I give uh, Chairman McCall credit for deciding that this is the time we've got to do it. We, we really aren't engaged in a major uh, military conflict. We certainly have uh, military forces around the world, but uh, the time to make sure that we are uh, using uh, really the, the thoughtful process that we should be using um, I think is now. Uh, the, the, the reason that we haven't done it before is because if a Republican president stood up and said, you know, I want to uh, go into this area, Republicans would support him. Democrat president wanted to do it, Democrats would support him. So it was more of a partisan issue before. Right now there's, there's somewhat of a lull and before anything heats up, it's, it's time to give thought to this.